Hangar 9's Pulse 60. It's a great ARF. It's a great flying ARF. It only has one real issue. Uh, they tip forward when they're taxiing and the wheels come in contact with a bump or some tall grass. We've discussed this in the RC universe and found it to be a common problem. There's a handful of guys that say, you need to keep your elevator up, I never have a problem. Well, we do keep our elevators up and we still have problems. They still tip. This segment of Building with Jim is for those of us who fly at real fields, real grass fields. Fields where you belong to a club where, oops, nobody remembered to mow the grass this week, it's kind of tall. Or the club couldn't afford a roller or perhaps just didn't get a chance to use a roller on the bumps this spring. What can be done about it? Plenty. There are things we can do with the pulse that will make it a lot more manageable. Uh, it's very simple. One of the things that uh, we've done here is we turn the landing gear around. Well, in the threads, guys will claim it makes it bounce all over. It doesn't make it bounce all over. It's actually quite manageable. Uh, as a matter of fact, it handles better than it ever did. But here's one of the things you'll see. The wheel pants, when you turn the landing gear around so they're swept forward instead of backwards, and uh, you take the wheel pants and move them over to the other side, they don't sit right. We'll fix that today. Let's get started. We've got the Pulse 60 inverted in our model stand now, so we can work on it. We've got the landing gear removed. This is the way the landing gear originally sat on the plane. What we're doing is we're turning it around. Well, how do we do that? Because, oh look, the holes don't line up. It's very simple. You take a little piece of cardboard from a cereal box, something along those lines. Uh, you notice I have arrows marking it. I cut, cut it very straight, and I cut it exactly the size of the saddle there. And then I lay the landing gear back into here. Make some simple little marks on where the gear were. And you can drill a hole in your cardboard. Right where these holes are, you can drill a hole in the cardboard. You can take and turn your landing gear around. That way, take your arrows, point them appropriately. Mark through the cardboard, through the holes, and then drill yourself a second set of holes right there that hold on the landing gear. After that, you can reinstall your gear. Very simple. It's almost too simple. Including the drilling, that would have taken, what, another minute and a half? Now we're going to do our wheel pants. Our landing gear is no longer swept back. We've now swept it forward by reversing it very simply, drilling two holes, easy job, you're done. Now, you want your wheel pants to fit. That's pretty simple, isn't it? Sure it is. You make sure that the nut is straight on there for what you're doing. You move your, oh, 7 16 or 11 millimeters should probably do it, and you get this straightened out. Uh, what I usually do is hold the plane, I lift the tail to hold the plane in a near flying flat configuration and then I reach in with my little sharpie, 
holding my wheel pan just about level, maybe up a little bit. I have myself a nice little mark now. What we're going to do is drill that out, remove that T-bolt from the other hole, and we'll move it over to our new hole that we're about to drill. Once we move it over to that new hole, we'll try it on, see how she looks. It's the landing gear. Here's how we get a T-bolt out. You screw a bolt into the T-bolt using something that, that will be able to tap it out. Just a sharp wrap on that bolt should pop the T-bolt out. And sure enough, no problem. Now it's time to drill our hole. the T-bolt, sometimes, always the most important, sometimes the toughest thing to do is to set it. What I use is a pair of, oh, I think they're $9 or $10 at Sears Craftsman needle nose pliers that reaches in, it'll reach in quite a ways, and it will will squeeze the T-bolt down where it goes. The rest is up to you. You're going to want to use a little bit of glue around the T-bolt to hold it in place so that it doesn't vibrate loose and things like that. That's as simple as it is to put your T-bolt on though. It's a little messy with the glue around it, but that's what your T-bolt will look like with a little fresh glue around it after it's been put in place. We've refit everything, drilled a new hole, moved our T-bolt over. Very, very simple process. Let's see how it looks. Well, on today's segment of Building with Jim, a little more RC knowledge has come into your mind. We've uh, taken a Pulse XT60 by Hangar 9. We've turned the standard configuration landing gear around and swept them forward. We've shown you how to take and remount your wheel pants. It's very simple, as you can see. Do it to your other one, you'll have a matched pair. You'll be ready to go to the flying field. And speaking of the flying field, I'll see you there.